Good morning students, welcome to Shine India YouTube channel. This is Chandrasekhar Reddy, Science and Technology faculty, Shine India IS Academy, Hyderabad. As part of our MCQs, today we see some questions in English. Let's get into the test. The first question is, green color roots are seen in. As you can see in the picture, the roots are very green in color. So the answer is Tineophyllum. Tineophyllum is commonly known as ribbon roots, it is a genus of about 240 species of orchid family. Plants are more or less leafless with a very short stem and roots that are often flat, green and photosynthetic in nature. So we all know the benefits of photosynthesis mechanism. So that is the speciality of this tineophyllum plant. Come to the second question. The plant grows in saline mashy soils. The answer is Avicennia. As you can see, the Avicennia plants are very well decorated like. The common name is white mangrove which is extremely widespread along the coasts of eastern Africa, islands of the Indian Ocean. Tropical Asia, Australia. So it may survive in any type of environment when frost may occur. Come to the third question. In dicots, the root system is. Observe the picture once so you can understand very easily. So in monocots, we see this fibrous root system, and as you can see in the picture, the dicots have this well developed, a very well developed taproot system. Taproot system develops one single strong and main root that grows vertically into the ground. Okay, next come to the fourth question. Root hairs are, so here the root hair is unicellular epidermal hair is a tubular outgrowth of epidermal cell that absorbs water, mineral salts from its surroundings. Next come to this interesting question. Leafless plant that depends completely on the metabolism of its roots. So you see this leafless and rootless plants. It is a leafless parasitic herbs having whitish or yellow filamentous stems. Its seeds is commonly used as a tonic for liver and kidney in herbal medicines. It has no chlorophyll and cannot make its own food by photosynthesis. Instead, it grows on other plants using their nutrients for its growth and weakening the host plant. Next question, question number 6. Enzymes produced in the pitcher or nepenthes. Here we can see this insect eating plant. So we have some examples like a Nepenthes, Utricularia, Sundew, Drosera. These are all examples for these carnivorous plants. So carnivores can increase the rate of photosynthesis by leaves of carnivorous plants as a result of increase in nitrogen absorption from prey. In order to digest caught prey in the air pitcher, that means the jars, Nepenthes plants produce various hydrolytic enzymes including aspartic proteases which are useful to digest insect proteins. Next question, question number 7. Nuclear membrane is absent in. So prokaryotic cells lack membrane bound organelles and well organized nucleus that is nuclear envelope is absent in these cells. This nuclear envelope is also known as the nuclear membrane, a bilayer membrane which surrounds the nucleus. And in eukaryotics, in eukaryotic animals, nuclear membrane is present which separates the contents of the nucleus from the rest of the cell. It is found in both animal and plant cells. It serves to separate the chromosomes from the rest of the cell which include an array of small holes or pores that permit the passage of certain materials such as nucleic acids and proteins between the nucleus and cytoplasm. Next question, question number 8. Tetanus is a, tetanus is a bacterial disease. We have two types of tetanus toxins here also known as tetanospasmin and tetanolysin. So these are the two toxins which can be released by this bacteria Clostridium tetanae. So is a hemolysin with no known function or pathology. So Clostridium tetanae is a causative organism for this disease process known as tetanus. It is an exotoxin producing pathogen. Next question, question number 9. Viruses are described as venom by who? The answer is Pasher. Our great Louis Pasher gave name virus which means venom or poisonous fluid. Pasher who gave us the method of pasteurization of milk. According to his research, certain non-bacterial pathogen caused the mosaic disease of tobacco as these particles could pass through bacterial filter and were infectious even after crystallization. And Louis Pasteur and Edward Jenner developed the first vaccine against virus infection. Next question, question number 10. 
good pollution indicators so here we have these lichens you can see in the picture lichens are regarded as pollution indicators lichen is highly sensitive to air pollution and it dies off rapidly in dirty air so lichens are regarded as pollution indicators because they are sensitive to sulfur dioxide and do not grow in polluted areas in simple words their presence indicate the absence of pollution in an area and their absence indicates that the area is polluted next section science and technology in this the 11th question the negative impact of gm crops here we see the options and we try to eliminate the wrong options and we try to get the right one here the first option is overproduction of vegetables scientists concluded that gm crops allow increase in yield of 6 to 25 percent depending on the country making genetically modified technology the fastest adopted crop technology worldwide in recent times so that is not the right answer here and we see this the b quick evolution genetically modified technology adoption had reduced the chemical pesticide use by 37 percent increased farmers profit by 68 percent so this is also a positive sign and our question what they are asking impact of negative impact so a and b are not the right options here and we go for the d low cost agricultural products low cost agricultural investment because we use the less and less uh, liters of pesticides and less and lesser quantity of insecticides so we can save some money on the investment of the agriculture so this is also good and there is a plenty of yield as we have mentioned in the option a overproduction of vegetables so the yield is too much so that is a good sign to feed this poor countries and uh, backward country so on option d is also positive one and we go with the option c so here the right answer is harmful effect on biodiversity genetically modification produces genetically modified animals plants and organisms so if they are introduced into the environment they can affect biodiversity of the native species so we go with the option c so in this way we try to eliminate the wrong answers and question number 12 polymerase chain reaction pcr is a technique of and you can see in the answer b gene amplification so what it is the gene amplification means pcr amplification is the selective amplification of dna or rna targets using the polymerase chain reaction pcr allows the amplification of dna sequencing in an exponential way using repeated thermal cycling so that is what the pcr is so if we have only one copy of dna if we want more and more copies like million copies of dna so we use this pcr technique to get the same copies without altering any dna sequences so next come to the bt cotton resistant to the 13th question bt cotton resistant to so here what do you understand the bt is a bacillus thuringiensis uh, crop cotton and we have the pests here the pink bollworm spotted bollworm and the american bollworm so these are the three major pests which can affect the bt cotton so here this bt cotton resistant to not against the viruses and not for bacteria and not for fungi so it kills the insects of particular species of bollworm species why because the bollworm effect is much more when compared with the other insects so the answer is insects and the 14th question the 14th question chromosome theory proposed by chromosome theory was proposed by gregor johann mendel and chromosome theory of inheritance is the idea that the genes the units of heredity are physical in nature and are found in the chromosomes so you see this nucleus and chromosomes and from that we get this coiled dna molecule so chromosomes are seen in all living individual cells and are passed from generation to generations chromosomes and genes are present as pairs in diploid cells fertilization restores a chromosome number to diploid that is 2n state genes are located on chromosome next question question number 15 mutations are noticed by hugo de vries in first you want to know what a mutation is a mutation is a change in a dna sequence mutations can result from dna copying mistakes made during cell division a gene mutation is a permanent alteration in the dna sequence that makes up a gene such that the sequence differs from what is found in most people mutations can occur during dna replication if errors are made and not corrected in time mutations can also occur as a result 
of exposure to environmental factors such as smoking, sunlight and radiation etc. So the next section physics. So question number 16. Transformer is a kind of appliance that can. So here we all use the word transformer every day in our everyday life. So and we try to eliminate the uh, wrong options here and first the generator which converts uh, motive power that means the mechanic power into electricity so that's not the right one here and a transformer is a device that is used to either raise or lower voltages and currents in an electric circuit generally transformers are used to boost voltage levels so sometimes these are called as voltage transformers so the right answer is increase voltage and decrease voltage so the next question question number 17 which metal is the best conductor of electricity so here we have the options gold aluminium platinum and silver and the right option is silver silver is the best conductor of electricity because it contains a higher number of mobile particles such as electrons among 118 elements of periodic table, most conductive elements of the periodic table are metals such as silver, copper, gold, aluminium, beryllium, calcium, magnesium, rhodium, sodium and iridium. The electrical conductivity of silver is the greatest of all metals, greater even than copper. Silver conducts the electron current or flow of electrons fairly easily when compared with other metals. And even you can see in the picture, the relative electrical conductivity is more for silver and uh, relative thermal conductivity is also more for silver when compared with uh, great copper. And the next question, question number 18, a P-type semiconductor has an excess of dash. So here we have two types of uh, semiconductors. We all know that N-type and P-type. The term P-type refers to the positive charge of a hole as opposite to n-type semiconductors p-type semiconductors have a large number of concentration than electron concentration so here we have the hole concentration is more than the electron concentration so in the n-type of semiconductors we have this electron concentration more than the hole concentration so that's the simple and fundamental difference so p is a positive charge positive charge comes from the holes and n is a negative charge comes from the electrons so to conclude, in p-type semiconductors, holes are the majority carriers and electrons are the minority carriers. Next question, question number 19. The best conductor of heat among liquid is? The answer is mercury. Mercury has low thermal capacity, high heat conductivity, inertness in relation to a glass capillary tube and a high boiling point. It is an ideal thermometric liquid except for its relatively high melting point. So the answer is mercury. And come to the 20th question. Solar day, lunar month and leap year are the units of? The answer is time. First we see one by one. Solar day is the time it takes for the earth to rotate about its axis. And the second one, lunar month. What is the lunar month? Is the duration between successive new moons has a period of uh, about 29.53 days. And we all know about the leap year. So these are all the units of time. And the next section, chemistry. Next question, 21. Which metal exists in liquid form? The answer is mercury. The metal which exists as a liquid at room temperature is mercury. And uh, the non-metal which exists as, as liquid at room temperature is bromine. Metals like calcium, aluminium, here we have this titanium are generally solids at room temperature. And there are six liquid elements in the total periodic table, total six out of 118. And those elements are cesium, rubidium, francium and gallium along with these bromine and mercury. So, and the mercury is the densest liquid on the earth and is also called as quicksilver. And the 22nd question, which is not an element? So, there is a slight difference between an element and a molecule. So, element is an individual Thing. molecule or compound is a group of atoms group of elements so that is the fundamental difference here we have this silicon and a silica those both are different the silicon is different from silica which has a formula of SiO2 silicon means just Si silicon and this silica has got a formula SiO2 it's chemically called as silicon dioxide and is a major constant of our sand 
which is a complex rather than an element. Even it is present in our bodies, helps to strengthen the connective tissue of the brain, nerve cells and spinal cord, thereby improving memory and helping to. And the next question is question number 23rd, which is the lightest element? Here the answer is hydrogen. Hydrogen is the lightest element and makes up about 90% of the universe by weight. Hydrogen as water is absolutely essential to life and it's present in all organic compounds. Hydrogen gas was used in lighter than air balloons for transport but it's far too dangerous because of the fire risk. Next, question number 24. Elements that are present in urea. First, uh, sometimes we better to know the, some formulas. Like in last year group 1 prelims, uh, they asked the composition of bleaching powder. So similarly here, the formula of fertilizer urea is CO NH2 taken twice. So the right answer is CHNO. Option C is the right. And the main functions of urea fertilizer is to provide the plant with nitrogen to promote green leafy growth and make the plants look lush. Urea also aids the photosynthesis process of plants. And come to the last question, question number 25th. Acid rain typically has a pH of about. Here you have some options there, 3, 4, 6 and 12. First you want to know what are the causes of the acid rains. Causes of acid rains here we can tell like a two types of causes. First one is the natural causes, volcanic emissions, biological processes, lightning are the causes of the natural type. And the second one is the anthropogenic causes, factories, motor vehicles, coal based power plants and domestic fires, smelters. So these are the examples for the anthropogenic causes. Our normal environmental rainwater pH is about 5.6 because it, it will have only the carbon dioxide in it because of NO2 and SO2 like nitrogen oxides and sulfur dioxide gases as pollutants in atmosphere the pH of the rainwater is further lowest to as low as 2.4 sometimes. So this type of precipitation is called as the acid rain. So that's all for today and uh, so please subscribe to our channel and like it if you like it and share with your friends and thank you very much.